Hi, Ann Cornick from Paint and Porcelain. And today, I just uh, wanted, I'm working on the second coat on my boxes. They'll soon be going to the mall. Now, I've already taken and um, uh, done the uh, bottoms of the boxes. And for the purple box, I made it this violet color. And for the yellow box, I made it um, kind of a, a goldenrod color. Okay, and so I just thought you might like to see how I finish uh, the second coat on these boxes. I'm about halfway through the violets right now, and I just thought that's a basic flower that we don't cover very often. And for those of you that are uh, um, uh, not painters, it'd be a good way to see how much work goes into a piece that, that we do for you. So, all righty, there we go. I'm going to um, flip this because I want to finish this. Uh, I've done the two, uh, all the violets. I put the purple on them. And now I'm in the process of doing the green on my, um, on my leaves. Now, first coat I did in blues and uh, uh, like a deep, uh, a blue and a shading green. And now I'm going to use a full load of of moss and a side load of the dark green and it really maybe a little too dark there can you believe I got my paint too dark that like never happens if you're a china painter you know what that means I'm just I'm just touching it the heaviest part is here at the top of my brush and I'm just touching it around this uh, violet that I've already done there because I don't want to mess it up too much and then I'm going to flip it over and I think we have a lot more new painters all of a sudden. And I noticed that we haven't done a lot of the basics with you. And this is a violet. This is my second coat on the violet. I just, on the second coat, I just do where the dark is. So I did my shading up in here and then I did down around the bottom. Now you notice this particular part of the violet above it doesn't show very well. And so I'm going to get a small brush and put a little, oh, my brush is kind of stiff. I got to soften it up here. Okay. Put a little oil on it and I'm just going to um, maybe put a little baby blue on it too. And I'm just going to, you always paint towards yourself. So I'm turning it so that I can just pull this color towards myself and make it a little lighter and that way it'll look like it's on top of that leaf a little more. Now, another way of getting um, some color in there is to add a little uh, yellow back into the center of these. Like a lemon yellow seems to not steal the color from other, other uh, paints. So I'm putting a little lemon yellow in there and a little lemon yellow here. And then I'm going to take my pointer, get a little bit of red, oh, and I'm just going to put a little red in there. I'm using carnation red. I like carnation red. Let's get this. Let's get this guy more more in the middle there. There. There we go. Alrighty, I'm just going to push it back a little there, better. And then the final thing I'm going to do is take my pointer. Um, <laughs> and I'm going to uh, just do this line on top and reinforce this. and here and here there we go that'll help them stand out just a little against that darker background okay now that's pretty much done I'm just going to sign it and it, it will be finished so um Those are my violets. 
for my these little Easter boxes. They're Easter eggs. This one has um, um, the base of it is like a sunflower yellow. And so that's kind of what I'm going to be using now to um, paint. I'm going to start with the, um, well, you know what? I was going to start with the petals, but um, I think I'm going to start with the leaves. And the reason I think I'm going to start with the leaves is because um, this is a real light color, and I can go over the leaves over the petals with the leaves and then wipe out the petals and I'll get a better result. So I'm using a um, full load of moss and a side load of warm brown green. I'm big on warm brown green suddenly. I don't know why. I'm going to have to hold this up because it's rounded and just start here, a little tight, a little heavy, and just paint it in. And this way, if I haven't already painted the uh, flower, I can be a little looser with my green, and um, if I get it on the flower, I don't really care. There we go. I want a real bumpy leaf. And it wasn't, so I'm making it a little bumpier by pulling some out. That's pretty good. I'm just going to take a little color off of this side here. And there. Then let's do the next one. Uh, now I'm going to come down here and do the bottom one. Oops, I have to remember where to stay, right? So I'm going to come right here and just see how easy it is to go over it. Like that. And I can go right over the, the petals because I don't care. I'll pull the petals back out. I mean, pull the uh, yeah petals back out. And then I'm going to do this guy here. I'm just doing the dark green. Um, there are two schools of thought on this. Um, some people just do, and sometimes I do this, I just do the dark part because that's the part that I'm working on. Um, other people kind of redo everything. Depends how your colors came. Like my colors held up pretty good on this. So I don't, I only need to really add the depth and then I'm pretty much done. Now I am going to pull it back up into the flower a little there. Okay. And then I'm going to come down this side a little, a little there and a little there. And I'm going to pull this off of here, this off of here, there. Okay. Alrighty, so now I'm going to take a Q-tip. In fact, I'm going to get a bunch of Q-tips out here. Unfortunately, I'm out of the pointy ones, so. And I'm just going to start wiping out. My petals on top so that I can see where they were. go and there was a petal here and here mm -hmm. this one doesn't need to be all that yellow there let's get rid of that okay that green I mean okay oh and down here I want to get rid of this this is has a little green on it this has a little green on it okay now you could call this a daisy you could call it a uh, sunflower. It really doesn't matter. I put turpentine on my brush and I'm just pulling some of the, the color that I have here that I still need to clean out. I'm cleaning it out a little, okay. And now I'm going to take, and I'm gonna use lemon yellow because it doesn't eat my orange with a side, side load of orange, and I'm just going to go in and... I just want these colorful. These are for Easter, and so I want them to have some color to them, so I'm adding orange to them to hopefully add in that color 
that I'd like to see on there. It's It doesn't, in fact, I think I'm gonna add a little brown, just a tad, right on the corner. Oh, see, because the brown is very, I'm using a dark brown, but if you do that, let me get a little more. If you do that and just take it from like the overflow of the brown, not from the real big part of the brown, You can get a little depth, make them curl up a little near the base. And they really look cool. Here we go. All right. Let me do these up in here with the orange and the orange. I'm gonna pull them out a little. Pull them out a little like this. Trying to stay in the... Now I'm reversing it. I'm putting the orange on the tips. You can do it either way. Doesn't matter. Whichever you prefer. And then I'm gonna take a little brown. Test it on your tile. It's the reason you have a tile, is to do some testing. Just test a little bit on your tile and go in and put a little more brown in. A little more brown in. Look at that. That made a huge difference there, didn't it? Ah. There we go. A little more brown in here. And a little more brown in here. Here at the base, because you remember I haven't touched the base of these yet. I just, on these petals, I did just the outside part. Okay. You can also take a little brown and put it on the leaf. Right where the shadow is. And it'll give you kind of a warm, really warm up that leaf. And then I want to do the center. I'm just touching it with the brown. This is kind of a big brush for that, but I'm a big brush person. Okay, now let's do this other little guy here. Um... I'm going to do the same thing I did before. Take lemon yellow because my lemon doesn't seem to eat my orange. I'm hoping, hoping, hoping because I'm just going to fix this guy up there. I really like the, um, the warmth of the orange. And so that's why I'm trying to... The other thing is you could leave the, the yellow on, not add any yellow at all, and just add your orange. And that also will um, keep the yellow from eating any reds or oranges that you're using. There we go. And then I'm gonna take a little brown and just, mm, I need a little more brown than that. And I'm just gonna do this, kind of separate these guys and give it a little more uh, depth at the base. I'm using a Jilly Flower Brown. I, I found it. Had never used it before. Never knew what it was. And I'm pleasantly surprised. It's like Rich Brown, but it's not quite as harsh as with Rich Brown. Um, these are going to be more in a shadow, but I didn't really want them to go that dark on me. So let me... There we go. Mm -hmm. Add a little more orange back in here. It's picky, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, now I'm going to use a smaller brush because using that big brush, it, it's not a real big brush, but it's a half inch. And um, for some of the work I'm doing, it, it's just too big. I need something a little smaller. I'm going to get a, um, what's this, a two? Yeah, two. I've got a two quill here. I like this two. 
and I'm going to just put it in my jelly brown, jelly flower brown, and I'm just going to, oops, there we go, and I'm just going to use the side of it, not, not the big part of it, but the side of it, and just tap in where I want that brown, and then up here I'm going to do the same thing. Move it up a little so you can see. See that beautiful highlight I have in the middle there? I was fortunate enough to save it from before. I do want a little more highlight here. Uh, I didn't save it, so I guess that's my fault. And then I'm going to take my half inch again, go back into the brown, and just... Oh, got to be very careful now, because that paint has dried a little bit. Put a little brown on these leaves here. And a little brown here. And then I'm going to put a little brown in here. To put that guy, uh, this brown is very hard to pick up on my brush, it seems like. There we go. And that will, um, that will help. And then I'll. And then I'll soften this that I lightened out there because I just want to separate that. There we go. Okay. That's how it's going to look. Um, I might want to see if I can get a little more highlight here or a little more highlight here. And you can do that by just taking a Q-tip and kind of pulling down gently. As long as you're careful, because this is set up a little, it'll it'll give you what was down below before. And here, no, I don't have it there. Okay. All righty. Well, but I thought you would enjoy seeing what's involved in um, painting the tops for my um, egg boxes. They'll be going to. Uh, the Plaza Antiques and Collectibles Mall on Dix in Lincoln Park shortly. And uh, I thought you'd kind of like to see what's involved. I will fire these. I don't think they're going to need another fire. I'm not putting background on them. I think the since the underside is going to be um, wet, uh, gr wet grounded, which means it'll be a solid color of color, um, that's really all it's going to need, and it'll it'll be pretty. So if I decide I need some background, I can always throw it on at the last minute. So, okay, well, for those of you that are painters, pick up those brushes and keep painting. For those of you that aren't, please support your local hand-painted China. Bye-bye. I'm going to subscribe so that other people can learn more about China painting and we can get the word out to more people. Uh, you also can look at the links below. Uh, my paintandporcelain.com website has a lot of freebies and printables for uh, new and experienced painters, as well as studies, supplies, and even some of my hand-painted china. So thank you again, and I'll see you next time.